I mean, why would I do that? That's just weird. Nah, I don't think they'd like that. Oh, come on. Seriously? Why on earth would I ask for that? Hey y'all, I'm Robert Kennedy the Third, RK3, and I wanna talk to you today about three things I do in online storytelling or online presentations that I don't do in person. Ooh. Well, if this is your first time to the channel, do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure that you come back because I'm gonna be giving you some goodies. I'm gonna be talking quite a bit about the techniques and the technologies of storytelling. If you wanna learn how to be a better storyteller, if you wanna learn how to get online visibility and just flat out communicate with people better, come on back to the channel, yeah. Over the last year, we've had, well, I don't know about y'all and we, I've had a lot of opportunities to speak and present to people online. And some people, especially in organizations, they wonder what they should be doing. Should they should they be doing the same stuff that they do in person? Should they be doing the same stuff that they do on stage or they do in the meeting room, the boardroom, the planning room, the room room, whatever room it is? What should they be doing to ultimately connect with people in the best way and engage with them in an online setting? Well, guess what? I'm gonna share with you three things really quickly. Well, the number one thing that I do in an online presentation that I don't do in person is I ask people to respond in the chat. Okay, yeah, so so that's obvious. Most people don't have a chat room in an in-person setting. Yeah, I get it. But in an in-person setting, here's the deal. A lot of times when you see people on their phones, you see them on their computers, you're kind of like, hmm, they're not paying attention, are they? and you actually get a little bit off your game because you think that they're doing something else. But in the online setting, I'm actually encouraging them to be on their phone, be on their, their computer, and start typing in the chat. Yeah, and the more that I do that, the more that I engage them, the more that I ask them to do those things, the more that I put them in action, the more that I give them something physical to do, the more likely they are to be paying attention. The second thing that I ask people to do in an online setting that I don't do in person is I ask to see their face. Yeah, yeah, I do. I know some of you, if you've been to a Zoom meeting and all of the cameras are off, you're like, whoa, dude. That's like a no-no. You shouldn't be asking people to turn their cameras on. You don't know what's in their background. Maybe it's something that you shouldn't be seeing. <laughs> well, listen, I'm not forcing anybody to turn their cameras on, but I do ask sometimes for people to turn their cameras on. And here's how I do. A lot of times I'll enter with music and I will start to dance during an online presentation. Something silly, something crazy. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, and I'll tell people to dance along with me and I'll just ask for who the best dancer is and I'll have people come on the screen and we can do anything. It could be like waving the hands in the air like they just don't care. It could be finger. I have this thing that I do called finger dancing. I like doing it, right? Because it allows people to engage and get their energy out and it's just different. Now, if you're in person and you have to ask people to show you their face, then there's a problem there. And the problem is not with the audience. <laughs> yeah, so you shouldn't have to ask people to see their face when you are in person. The third thing that I do in virtual situations that I don't do in person is I play online games. Ooh right? No, not like Candy Crush or anything like that. I play online games. I ask them questions. I ask them to spin wheels. I ask them to choose to play Jeopardy. I ask them to make choices. I ask them to make decisions. Yeah, I do that in the online setting by allowing them to interact with their computers. However, I also allow people to play games during an in-person session, especially if I can get the games virtual through their phones and put them on screens or whatever, then that allows people to engage in a different way because they're doing something on a device that they were already playing with anyway, right? And then I put the games or I put those types of things on screen. So it just really allows people to be engaged with their device. It allows them to see what they're doing or to see interactively how they are they are connecting. If you wanna get more information about the techniques and the technologies of storytelling, come on back to the channel. And while you're here, do me a favor, 
do your man a favor, go ahead and click subscribe and smash that bell, that notification button, so that whenever I drop new video, a little birdie can come find you and you can watch the new video. And you can leave comments and you can tell me how great the video was. Yeah, I would like that. I would really like that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'll see you in the next video.